Hey everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I want to show how you can take a SharePoint multi-select lookup field and take those values and put that into a collection so that you can populate a drop-down box. I'll show a specific use case for this in the video for why you might want to do this and how to make it happen. But first, here's the intro. I dive into the how, let's talk about the why and what I'm trying to accomplish with this. In this scenario, I'm building a power app that is a company store where you can order items. Let's take a look at the backend data first so you'll see what we're trying to do. In this case, we're using SharePoint for the data and we have a few lists that we're using to manage the products that people can order. We have one list that's categories where we can just modify and easily put in the different categories that are available. And you'll see we have another list for sizes. So just to make it easy to manage for the end user, rather than hard coding these in a dropdown, we wanted the ability to just use a list to manage the sizes so a user can go in and add or remove any different size options here. In our products list here, you'll see that we have a column called size, which is a lookup column. So we want to be able to allow when someone goes in to add a new product that you can order, we want them to be able to tag it with what sizes that you can pick from. And obviously there could be multiple. So we need to let this allow multiple values, which is what we did here, and pull in these sites. Now from the Power App standpoint, we'll take a look at our app here. We want to choose a category. So let's go into Hand Protection. And in the gallery here where we show the different options, we want to be able to show what sizes are available here in a single line. So as you can see here, I have different sizes available for the gloves, extra large, large, medium, and small. And those are pulled in from the lookup column in our SharePoint list. There's some special formulas and stuff that you have to do to actually make this show up. And taking it a step further, if I wanna add this item to the cart, so these work gloves, for example, I have a drop-down box where I only want to show the size options that are available for this particular product. So I need to be able to pull in that multiple option lookup value for this item and only show those sizes that are available. I'm not going to get into how to patch back a multi-select lookup column to SharePoint in this video. I can save that for another video. This is just how you can take values from a multi-select lookup and surface them up in your Power App like this either in a text field or as we see here in a dropdown. So hopefully that makes sense, the problem that we're trying to solve here. Now let's take a look at how to make this work. So here I have a screen in my Power App where we can browse the different products. And all I'm doing is surfacing up a gallery that points to that products list and is filtered based on the category that you choose. Pretty straightforward there. If I dive into this gallery, I have a label for sizes and this is where all of the code is happening where we can pull in the multi-select lookup values for this particular item. And to handle this, I'm actually using a relatively new function that was just released for Power Apps called the with function. This with function is actually pretty cool. It really helps with the readability of complex formulas that you're using. And it also helps with performance because the values that you're referencing are just available within the scope of the width. So for example, if you, in this case, I'm using a concat, if I weren't using the width, I would need to set that to a variable before I could reference it later on, and that's an unnecessary variable. But if I wrap that here in the width, then it's just evaluated within this function. I don't have to have that stored in an unnecessary variable just to get the end value that I'm trying to get here. I'll post a link for more detailed information on this new width function in the video notes so that you can study up on that and see if there's any possible use cases for that in your Power Apps. So with this with function, what I can do is I can set a, I guess a, a temporary variable, for example, and I'll call it size of string. Now to get the values from my multi-select lookup, I need to parse them. So I can do that with this concat. 
So in the concat function, I can pass in a table that I want to concatenate. And in this case, my table is the sizes from our lookup column. So you'll, I'll put in the this item that size because we're in a gallery and I want to get the lookup value sizes for the selected items. And then you'll just do a comma and then type in value because we want to get the actual value stored in there. And then we want to separate them with a comma. So that will actually get all of the values from our lookup and put them in this sizes string. Now this next part is necessary because one of the downsides of this concat function is that you will be left with a trailing comma. It's not smart enough to know that there's not another item after that. So you'll see like small comma, medium comma, large comma, and then another comma. We don't want that trailing comma, so that's why this next piece of the puzzle is needed. We can use the mid formula and pass in our sizes string, okay, that holds all of our values. And then in the mid formula, you have to say, where do you want to start? So in this case, I want to start at the first uh, number of our string. And then where, where do you want to start the trim, basically? And to do that, we need to figure out how many characters there are in the string and start there. So we can use another function called the len or length function, and we will get the length of our sizes sh string here, right? So first we're collecting basically or concatenating all of our multi-select lookup values. And then we were removing that trailing comma here with the mid function. Now that's all we need to do to be able to get the sizes broken out here with commas. Now for the other part, when we click add to cart and how we're populating this dropdown, we need to use a different function for that. So let's take a look at that. On the dropdown itself, you'll want to go to the items property and this should look pretty familiar here. We're using that with function again so that we can reference our string here. So we're going to use that same concat, but instead of doing the this item in the gallery, we will use the gallery products dot selected dot size because the context in this case is different. So I'm in a dialog box. I'm not within the gallery itself, so I can't use the this item. I need to get the selected size for the selected item in the gallery. Then we'll pass in the value and we'll separate that with a comma. And again, we will use our mid function to remove the trailing comma. And this is especially important in the drop down box scenario because if we don't use that trailing comma, it will actually see the value after the trailing comma as a valid drop down value so you'll have an empty option there which we don't want so that's why we need this mid function in here and finally drop down values can't be a string they need to be uh, record values so we need to do a split so we actually want to split our sizes on the comma so that we can get them as unique line items so all of that put together gives us what we are seeing here all of our sizes for the selected item populated in the dropdown. I wanted to do this video because I've saw a lot of people kind of asking about how to do this, getting multi-select values from lookups and, and surfacing up in the Power App like this, but I didn't really see too many videos um, that walks through exactly how to do it. If you're wanting to know more about SharePoint lookup columns and Power Apps and specifically how you would patch those values, there's already some great videos out there on YouTube. Um, Shane Young has one, for example, that's great. You know, he has a, a video on just about everything. So definitely check some of those out. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video.